visibility and try to correct some of the biases we, we know that exist in, in our society. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much for coming, Christina, and uh, we'll be happy to hear everything you say. Thanks. Well, thank you, David. Uh, you're right. I do feel that we're friends here because I do see some names and, and faces that I, I know. So it's, it's really nice to see a friendly crowd here. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, building a data science infrastructure on the cloud. Um, and this is, this is really years of work uh, from multiple people and multiple leaders. Uh, so it's definitely not just my work, but I just have the pleasure uh, to, to show you some of the, the work that have been done over the years. So I'm going to start with the background on ICGC. Uh, there's the 25K initiative and there's the pan cancer analysis. Those stories would really give you a feel of why we're doing what we're doing and how we're going to uh, move forward uh, as we build these uh, initiatives out. I'm going to talk about the Cancer Genome Collaboratory, which is a compute cloud right here in Toronto. Uh, we'll talk about Overture, which is also a, a suite of software that we have uh, sort of accumulated over time. We didn't set out to build out this suite, but as a result of the work, uh, this, this got uh, uh, developed over the years. I'll also talk about You Can Can. Uh, this is obviously a collaboration uh, between here as in Canada and also with BSC and other European uh, institutes. And finally, I'll wrap it up with uh, our work uh, going into the Argo. So with ICGC, there are actually three initiatives. Uh, the first initiative started back in 2008 and it lasted just over 10 years. And then the second initiative start actually somewhere in the middle of the 25K initiative is called the Pan Cancer Analysis of Whole Genomes. We usually like to call it PCOP. Um, and then the latest initiative that started recently and is going to ongoing till 2030 is the Accelerate Research in Genomic Oncology, that's Argo. So first talk about uh, uh, ICGC 25K. Uh, when this pr project started in 2008, the goal is to catalog 25,000 tumor genomes with match normals uh, over different cancer types. And so this map kind of shows you uh, what projects contributed to ICGC 25K uh, with really participation from all around the world. The end result uh, was that we had tumor samples from 22 cancer primary sites. It involves 86 projects across 16 countries. Uh, this project actually ended in 2019, meaning that we have a data freeze uh, at that point and we are not accepting new data. But basically in this project, uh, the, the participants submitted their clinical data to the Data Coordination Center, DCC, and they also submitted their varying calls that they themselves have analyzed. The raw data has been going to EGA that you can access from there. And then the genomic variants, meaning the VCFs, got submitted to the DCC. Uh, so the data is accessible from the data portal, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, and what is important during this, this process is that there's a bioethical framework established. So all these projects, despite being from different countries, did agree to uh, a consent that they will uh, share the data uh, in, in a very open fashion. So if you apply to access the controlled access data, uh, you actually get access to all the projects, not just one of them. Uh, so the idea is that we make the data available to the research community uh, with very little restrictions. Uh, there's no restrictions on how you, can, you have to use the data. So the Data Coordination Center was established at OICR. Uh, initially, our responsibility to use, you know, establish a data dictionary, do data curation, validation. Uh, we build the web portal uh, and distribute the data. At the beginning, all everything was very much on premise uh, in our own compute infrastructure. And later on, things got uh, migrated to compute clouds. Uh, there are a number of data types, uh, the clinical data and somatic mutations, copy numbers, structural variations, et cetera. 
Now, the infrastructure to uh, to to, to handle the data was built really back in you know 2012. And this is actually the work of my predecessor, Vincent Ferretti. So what I'm gonna show you in 25K, I really can't take credit for it. Uh, he designed a system that is very much scalable with the data size at the project grows over the years. So primarily there is a submission system, an ETL process and the web portal. Um, these are the technologies that, that were being used, and I would have to say they really lasted time uh, as, you know, even when we build new technology stack, these technologies are still being considered uh, in our stack. So this is the ICGC data portal that many of you are probably familiar with. Um, this was launched even back in 2013, but lasted till right now, almost over ten, seven years. Uh, the idea is that a lot of the tools are available right in the browser. So you can do search, visualization, and analyzing the data without really downloading the data. Uh, so one really great tool is to actually build a virtual cohort. So for example, if you're interested in breast cancer, you're not restricted to just one project that, that gives you breast cancer data, but all the projects within ICGC that contain breast cancer data, you can actually uh, build a cohort based on very specific search criteria or clinical data. Uh, this is a very fast uh, portal, despite having uh, over uh, 80 million somatic mutations. Like I said, uh, it provides the in-browser visualization because we don't want people have to have to download the data. And also some people just don't have the bioinformatics skills uh, to actually write up a R script or a Jupyter notebook to do the analysis. So a lot of available is already available within the browser. Um, so I'm just gonna show you some of the visualization elements because I think these are elements that can really be brought into many different type of uh, uh, visualization browsing. And the important thing is all these visualization tools are packaged into a, a product called OncoJS. This is actually a set of JavaScripts so that you, if you're building a web portal, you can actually reuse them to do this visualization in your application. And then uh, there's, there's pathway viewer as well. Um, there's way to do survival analysis between two cohorts. In this example, the two cohorts are uh, both pancreatic cancer, but one with the KRAS mutated and one without the KRAS mutated. And then, so in this case, you can actually compare the overall survival and disease free survival right in the browser. Um, and that, that helps researchers to get information as quickly as possible. Uh, the other feature that is pretty cool is um, we we call we this allows us to do a live stream of a BAM file of a VCF file to get stats very quickly again without downloading the data and so this is enabled uh, by using uh, IOBio and also our Overture product which I'm going to talk about in in a second. There's also gene set enrichment analysis. Uh, and the last piece that, that got into the portal was actually a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we allowed folks to actually analyze the data right uh, using the Jupyter Notebook already available, so you don't actually have to spin up your own. Uh, so if you're interested, do uh, give it a shot uh, uh, on, on the portal. Now, the 25K was a very large initiative at the time uh, involving so many groups. Uh, but halfway through it, I think we started to learn some lessons. First of all, um, we did not ask for a lot of clinical data. We were not very stringent. And that's because we're afraid that if we ask for a lot of clinical data, people are just end up not submitting it. The bar was set a bit low. But we realized that, you no, know, we would actually need a lot of more clinical data to be able to answer meaningful questions. Uh, the other thing we note, notice is that genomic data needs to be accompanied with a lot of metadata, sort of describing, you know, the experiment uh, that was performed to collect the data. So even like things like read group or insert sizes, 
those may be trivial uh, at, the, at the beginning, but when you want to do the downstream analysis, you realize that, oh, actually I need that metadata in order to do the analysis. So we have realized that, yes, we need to start to ask with more metadata right from the beginning. And the other thing we learned is that, as I said, the variance submitted to 25K were analyzed by each group on their own. And we realized that these variants when analyzed by different methods really are hard to be compared or combined together. So here is the graph showing uh, 10 callers with the purple at the bottom showing the somatic calls, the number of somatic calls that were called by all 10 callers and then going up just by nine callers. And at the top, these are private calls made by just one caller. So it's really hard to come to say, well, which one is actually making false positive call or extraordinarily good at making some true positive calls that other callers didn't manage to make. So with that knowledge, uh, we started a, another initiative called PCOC, Pan Cancer Analysis of Whole Genomes. The idea is that we would do a, per, uh, a uniform analysis on the cancer whole genomes. Uh, because of the way that I said, you know, the metadata is actually necessary and is collected in a very heterogeneous way by different groups. We actually made a call out to a consortium members to submit their whole genome data after it has been reformatted with a standardized set of metadata. So it was actually quite a lot of work on a consortium members, but we had a very overwhelming uh, uh, response. So we actually collected uh, 2,834 tumor normal pairs. And these were again from across the world, uh, 14 jurisdictions. And it's actually a lot of data, 800 terabyte. Um, so this initiative, when it started, it, 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 we did not have a lot of advanced planning. So there was no way that one data center could host 800 terabyte, uh, let alone processing that much data. So we made a call out to our consortium members asking who could be donating uh, data center resources to host the data and to compute. And we also got very ambitious uh, for our whole genome analysis. We did one alignment, just BWAMM, but we had three variant calling pipelines uh, because uh, data has shown that one calling pipeline is not very accurate. If you want to increase your uh, accuracy, you really should have at least two. So we had three uh, contributed by the Sanger Institute, the Broad Institute, and also uh, the DKFZ and AMBO group. And with that much compute to do, we actually end up using 14 computing centers. Uh, and it's a combination of uh, clouds and HPCs. So as you can see, uh, BSD was part of this as well. And Romina is actually the person who really single-handedly ran a whole lot of analysis for the group. Um, and we also had commercial clouds to help us. Now, this actually took two and a half years, much, much longer than you normally would if you had the pipelines uh, in your hands and just run them through the way. We, we didn't. The pipelines were uh, developed as the project went, and it's because all three pipelines at the time were running on uh, an internal environment, mostly HPCs. So all of a sudden, we need to strip out these pipelines from that local environment in such a way that it can be run on many different environments. Uh, so that was quite a challenge. And then setting up these environments is not easy either. Uh, even though we say, hey, one is a cloud and then the other is a cloud. Well, they're actually not the same. Uh, we actually end up calling them snowflakes because each one is actually unique. They're just not the same. Uh, after two and a half years of analysis, we pass that data to the working groups and they perform the downstream analysis uh, to do uh, further discovery. And so as a result, uh, 20 papers were published in February of 2020. Uh, they were published in Nature and other affiliated journals, uh, and the data can be assessed through the data portal. 
Um, so I, I personally think that Peacock uh, has quite an impact and it's just because of the timing of the project. Uh, when we were doing this project, cloud computing at scale was still very novel in our community. Um, like I said, we actually have to strip these pipelines from its local environment. Our initial version didn't even have containers uh, and dockers yet because there's still very new technology. Uh, so during this project, we gradually shift over to use containers for the workflows. Uh, both workflow languages, CWL and Widow, were still in development. They, they haven't even released their uh, first version. So it was a, a learning experience for everyone involved, uh, but it was very valuable because these uh, people who are involved really becomes the pillar in uh, establishing the standards for the workflow languages and also in some of the cloud uh, execution uh, standards. So like I said, the timing was just right. Uh, J4GH, the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health was just formed around that time. So there's a cloud work stream and of course they just gather, you know, a huge group of members from the community to establish standards that will help uh, run workflows in a cloud computing environment. So several standards have been set uh, that includes like work execu workflow execution service, two execution, two registry, and data registry. So one example I can talk about is the two registry. Uh, DocStore is developed at OICR uh, by Lincoln Stein's group. Uh, it, this is basically an app store, if you think about it. You have your app store for your iPhone or Android phone. This is an app store for biometricians. Uh, so the idea is that uh, the, pack, the software are packaged into containers and different workflow descriptions uh, languages are used. So right now it supports uh, CWL, Widow, and Nixflow. And by registering this app as a package into DocStore, you will be able to uh, run things in, in an easier manner. So when we say that, hey, this, this supports the principles of portability, it means that these workflows can be run on any system that allows containers. So whether it, it is a cloud or your HPC, so long as it supports containers, that's a workflow can, that uh, software can run. Interoperability is important because you can now port this from different uh, clouds, uh, whether it is Amazon or Azure or Google, you can do that. And reproducibility is, is important because now all the dependencies are packaged into one container. You're not going to have difference. And Peacock is that downloading the sequence is just not a sustainable model. Uh, in ICGC, there's 1.5 petabyte of data. Of course, that is mostly uh, sequencing data, raw sequencing reads or aligned reads. If you don't need reads, you're just happy with the VCFs, then you can, you're fine to download the data. If you want to uh, access the read, then it's impossible because it would just take you days or even months to, to download the data and you probably don't have enough storage uh, at your lab. So we noticed that, hey, cloud computing is really the way to go so that we can co-locate the data in the cloud and then researchers and can come to the cloud uh, with their analysis methods, do the analysis there uh, instead of having to download the data. So as we recognize this need, we build uh, a compute cloud in Toronto. It's called the Cancer Collab Genome Collaboratory. Right now it's hosting over one petabyte of ICGC data. The idea is that any researchers can apply for tenancy just like you can go to uh, AWS and have your own account. You can start your own VMs, uh, you bring your analysis methods you, and you can compute on the data. And of course you can also bring your own data as well to do the analysis. Now this is uh, running on a cost recovery model, um, but it's very easy because we make it just a flat fee, very simple a model. So it's not like AWS where if you get a VM of a large number of cores, you actually have to pay more for that. And also the other thing is that we have a very dedicated support staff uh, administrators 
to, for the collaborators. So if you come and have questions, they're very familiar with many of the biometrics too and will be readily able to help you. So here's a success story uh, from using the collaboratory. Um, so this is, uh, uh, Shimi is a uh, graduate student in uh, Lincoln Stein's lab. And so Lincoln basically got a tip from a collaborator, Michael Taylor saying that they observed a, a high number of mutations in this, uh, non, this non-coding regions, UI, SNRNA, splices he observed in medulla blastoma, and he was curious if this is also the case in other type of cancers. So that was a good tip. And what Shimmy did is she he utilized the data in Peacock already in collaboratory. So he already he simply wrote a script to interrogate under 200 base pair of that whole genomes from all of the Peacock samples. And just to see what the mutation, if there's any mutations uh, in those regions. Uh, of course, it took only a day to, to do that in this, this very small region. Um, and as a result, he did found that yes, this, uh, there is a high level of mutation in different type of cancers in this U1 SNRNA. Um, he found the results, validated it through uh, wet labs, and eventually got it uh, to publications in Nature. So this is a really good success story, but uh, uh, of course it's really serendipity. Uh, it's really hard to get a good tip, but also have the right tools and data uh, to, to make such a discovery. So a bit about the cancer collaboratory uh, architecture. Uh, we, we basically build it from scratch. Uh, you know, we configure our own hardware. Ultimately, we have a nine, or just over nine petabyte of raw storage uh, because we have take triplicates of the data. Uh, we actually have three petabyte usable. So our storage system is Ceph storage uh, on the object store. And we have just over uh, 3,500 compute cores and 22 terabyte of RAM. So this is running on an open stack system, uh, allows us to configure different uh, flavors of virtual machines. Well, out of our work in collaboratory and also PCOG, uh, and also ICGC 25K, we started to accumulate a number of software modules that we found that you, that could be reusable from project to project. So from collaboratory, because we are doing a cost recovery model on OpenStack, we actually develop an enrollment application and a billing application just to let people apply for accounts and then we invoice them on a monthly basis. Uh, and was quite surprised to hear that actually a group in Europe is, is now using our application, these applications for their own um, architecture uh, infrastructure. And then out of that, we also have other components to deal with authorization, data storage, metadata management, uh, indexing of the metadata, uh, providing a search API to the portal. Those are things that we, we have, those five components are what we now call the core components in order to set up a uh, data repository uh, using the cloud. And I also mentioned there are other modules uh, for visualization, such as OncoJS, and then this one for uh, integration with Jupyter Notebook called Jukebox. So these software are completely open source. So if you're interested, do check it out at our website, overture.bio. Um, and as a result of these reusable modules, uh, we are now using them in EU CanCan. So you may be familiar with this project already. Uh, I, I love the name you can can, it's so catchy and, and everyone remembers it very easily. Uh, basically this project aims to implement a cultural and technological and legal integrated framework across both Europe and Canada. Uh, so the idea is one to facilitate analysis and management and also responsible sharing of the data. So this is kind of the idea where uh, there are six data nodes in EU can, can uh, one in Toronto and the others in Europe. Each of them will install some uh, two pieces of Overture software called SOM 
for managing the metadata, such as the clinical data and any uh, file metadata as well. And another piece of software called SCORE, that is for managing the storage and uh, managing the upload and download of the files. So well, the idea is each node will manage their own genomic data. The data stays put, it doesn't move around to another jurisdiction. Uh, these, these metadata in some though will be indexed uh, through a centralized service. So at least the metadata will be available in the portal so you can actually do searches. So for example, you may want to look for breast cancer data where the donor is, was diagnosed at 30 years or under. And by doing such a query in the portal, you'll be able to locate the data that meets that search at any of these nodes. And then you can, you'll be able to get a data manifest and use that data manifest to either download the data if you wish, or ideally these data nodes will actually have compute resources to allow you to get an account and do your compute in those data nodes. So those are, are a bit of history and, and some of our new initiative collaboration with you CanCan. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk about the Argo initiative. Uh, this is our latest work. And this is going to be the work over uh, focus over the next few years till 2030. I know it sounds like a long time, but it will fly by because we have so much work uh, that we need to do. So first of all, Argo is going to focus on 100,000 cancer genomes. Uh, this time we require our members to submit uh, whole genomes or whole exomes and along with RNA-seq data. And more importantly, we're going to have very high quality clinical data. We, this time we set the bar a bit higher uh, so that these data will be available to answer questions uh, in, in cancer research. So obviously we're going to utilize many of the lessons we learned, uh, many tools that we have developed already. The challenge in ICGC 25K is that obviously we have four times more donors. Uh, we expect to have more whole genomes and likely at higher coverage since the technology uh, of sequencing has advanced so much. Uh, and also this time we want to uh, cover germline variants as well. So obviously germline variants is three times, uh, three orders of magnitude more than just somatic mutations. So we're gonna have a lot more data. I told you before that ICGC 25K had 80 million somatic mutations. Uh, we're going to expect like 400 times of that, sorry, 4,000 times of that. Um, and also because we're trying to do uniform analysis over the course of 10 years, uh, of course, technology is going to change. Both the sequencing technology, the analysis method, and even just the software technology is going to change. So we'll have to be very adaptable. Uh, and that's even more important that we develop our software in a very modularized way. So we can swap out the old one and plug in, plug in a new part uh, without building it from scratch. Uh, and we already heard from our members that they want to contribute other data types, such as single data cell data or proteomics. So again, we have to be ready for that. So, so far in Argo, uh, 25 programs have already uh, committed to contributing data across 13 countries. So that's just over 58,000 donors committed. Uh, very interestingly, we have a lot of uh, uh, GI tumors uh, in breast and prostate. And so there's a difference uh, from uh, between these programs and the ICGC 25K. Uh, this time we have more metastatic and advanced cancer types joining. So that, that's really great because we seem to be lacking data in, in, that, in those uh, areas. 52% uh, of the projects would be the con, uh, contributing whole genomes. That's again, is a great thing. And also there's a difference. Uh, previously in ICGC uh, 25K, most of the projects were mainly uh, research projects, but this time we actually will have clinical sequencing programs and also clinical trials as well. And it's really great to have clinical trials because we know that these trials typically follow page, the patients for a couple of years. So we can expect to uh, get very thorough data in terms of treatment outcome or drug responses uh, or their, their, uh, their outcome over the years. 
Some of them have already started, but some of them are still in development. Um, and I know, unfortunately, the pandemic had slowed down the, the progress for some of these projects, uh, primarily because they, some of them could not get into the lab to do the sequencing or the clinical trials could not uh, recruit patients at this point. So for our data management infrastructure, uh, it's somewhat similar, but also different from 25K. So first of all, the clinical data, we're gonna ask the programs to submit to the DCC, just like they have been doing in the past. But this time for the molecular data, the sequencing data, we're gonna ask folks to submit to, to the data process centers in their region. Um, because we try to limit the uh, movement of the data to make it more efficient transfer. And also we're gonna spread the analysis across different RDPCs. So far, we already have commitment from China and South Korea to act as RDPCs. Uh, the Canadian, will, the Canadian uh, Cancer Genome Collaboratory will also act as RDPC for a period of time. Uh, and we're hoping that BSC will join as well to act as the European RDPC, uh, that's in discussion. Um, and then the idea is the sequencing data will be analyzed at the RDPC using a uniform pipeline. That uniform pipeline is being developed by the DCC in collaboration with the working groups. Once the analysis is done, um, the raw data, the analyzed uh, alignment will be sent to clouds for storage. So we call these cloud distribution center. It could just be uh, academic clouds or commercial clouds. Again, the discussion is ongoing. The idea is that these would be permanent storage uh, for users to download the data if they wish. Also, the varying calls will be sent to the DCC. So we can actually index the varying calls with the clinical data to make it easier for search in the, within the Argo data platform. So just to uh, give you a sense of our responsibilities, uh, we have to develop the clinical data dictionary with the tissue and clinical working group. This actually has been ongoing for uh, at least a year and a half, as we have we has been, we've done some very thorough work. Uh, we also have to develop the ICGC data platform. I know previously we call it a data portal, but now I really think that is more of a platform because it needs to manage uh, a number of things. So first of all, uh, it manages the submission of the clinical data and molecular data. We also provide a dashboard, uh, or I should say a series of dashboards to help the program track the submission of the data. It also allow them to see the analysis progress in the RDPC. And uh, we also use this uh, platform for uh, data curation and quality check. And then finally is the data portal that you're familiar with to enable searches and visualization. Uh, for the RDPCs, the OSCR team is actually developing the infrastructure. Uh, these, this hopefully will become a blueprint for other RDPCs to set up, and obviously we will have to help them. Uh, one main challenge is, as I said, the collaboratory environment is an open stack, and we're also using Kubernetes for the RDPC, but there's no guarantee any other RDPC will follow the same kind of infrastructure. Uh, some of them, as we know, will be HPC environment, uh, and some of them, if we are successful in our discussion, will be in the commercial clouds. So again, we'll actually have to modify our infrastructure uh, to, to fit on the different clouds. We'll operate the Canadian RDPC and coordinate operations of the RDPCs. And lastly, as I said, we'll develop new workflows uh, not on our own, but with the working groups. These workflows will be available in containers uh, so that they can uh, run uh, at different RDPCs. So just to give you a sense of what I meant by a higher bar for the clinical data. So far, we have established uh, just about 60 data elements that we consider to be core. These are mandatory that each group has to submit. Uh, and this data has a very good overlap with M code. And then we're also uh, developing extended set of data elements. Uh, these will be considered optional and sometimes cancer specific, but this is ongoing work is really living document. So if you're interested in the dictionary, you can definitely check it out. Um, and 
we're hoping that this dictionary will be adopted by many other research groups uh, because that would definitely facilitate the data interoperability problem that we are trying to solve. Um, for any of the programs, this is sort of their process of submitting the data to us. Uh, we go through very vigorous data and molecular data. We definitely want high quality data, but without uh, the manual curation uh, that, that may be necessary. Uh, and then this is the dash, they will see all the, uh, the progress in the dashboard. And one thing we want them to do is also to QC the data. When we finish the analysis at the RDPC where there's alignment of varying calls, we make the data back available to the programs along with some QC metrics so they can uh, review the data and actually say whether the data passed or failed. Um, we try to make it very self-serve. Uh, we don't want them having to contact us all the time just to get information. We try to give all the information to them at their fingertips uh, so they can complete uh, their, their QC and also to track their progress. Uh, after all the data has passed a uh, quality check, then this data will be released in the data portal for, for searches and for the research community. So this is the homepage of our data platform. This was launched just last year. Um, so feel free to come and take a look. It definitely not, it definitely doesn't have all the bells and whistles yet, just like the 25K portal, but we're gradually getting there. First thing is to make the data available. I think that's most important for the community. Uh, this is the kind of dashboard that we are designing and building. Uh, allowing you know, a program who have submitted data to Argo to look at uh, how much clinical data they have submitted over time, how much molecular data have been analyzed. Um, and we try to call them into actions by showing them what data is completed. So for example, here we may say, tell them, hey, the data is pending QC, please go and take the action and QC the data. This is not available yet as we're still building it. Uh, what is available is the search and download. So if you go to the platform right now, you can see the file repository. We have made two data releases so far. Uh, there's so far 400 donors with either whole genome or whole exome alignment and all the slow the same variant calls. These 400 donors were actually uh, carried over from 25K project. These projects committed to, submitted the, to submitting the additional clinical data that's required in Argo, and hence they will continue participating uh, in Argo. Uh, so very briefly, just to talk about the RDPC uh, infrastructure, this is in very active development right now. Uh, we haven't, we're hoping to have a first version uh, in production in the next couple of months. Um, you see there are a number of technologies we're using. Uh, as I mentioned, we're using Kubernetes. Our workflow language is Nextflow. Um, and also we're, we're implementing uh, the GA4GH workflow execution service API as well. So just very briefly, uh, we have a interface that we can use to start and cancel the runs, but more importantly, to view the run status. This user interface will call the West APIs to uh, either start a run, cancel a run, or get status. And this, these APIs will actually interact with uh, the Kubernetes uh, cluster to kick off Nixflow workflows. Uh, as these Nixflow workflows of the process run, they will get data from the backend uh, managed by Song and Score. And as they finish running or as they encounter errors, uh, the messages are actually posted to Kafka, which is a, a, a queue, an event queue. And this, these messages are actually sent to Elasticsearch for long-term storage. So we basically keep these messages uh, from right from the beginning of running. Uh, so these messages in Elasticsearch can be queried at any time by a search service or just simply by the West API to report status uh, and feedback to the user interface. Um, more of this will be uh, clear as we prepare our documentation. Uh, but just to get you a feel, this is the dashboard we started building. Uh, it's, 
basically this dashboard interacts with the uh, West API to get status. Uh, but very easily, we can click on each of the runs to see uh, if there are errors, uh, what the error messages are, or what the runtime is for that particular field. Now, I'm just going to uh, wrap up with a bit of vision we have for Argo. I know there's a lot of words here because these are plans and ideas we have and that haven't been executed yet. Um, but the idea is the clinical dictionary, we're going to continue expanding it. This is going to be ongoing work. The important part is that we work with researchers in different cancer types to help us develop this dictionary. And we want them to be, uh, to adopt this dictionary for their own, uh, for, for their own work. So hopefully they don't have to duplicate the work. Uh, and as more research, research projects use the same dictionary, it would be much easier for us to interoperate our data. Uh, we definitely want to be compatible with emerging standards such as FHIR and uh, G for GHP no packets. Uh, this is something we'll work towards. And standards are really important actually for, in general, for uh, our interoperability with other platforms. So data beacon API was already uh, implemented in ICGC 25K. This really allows us to uh, users to find data across multiple cancer data resources. And I'm actually really looking forward to see Beacon uh, being developed in this next version with more functionalities. Uh, as I showed you already, we use the work, uh, the workflow execution service uh, to enable uh, compatibility with other clouds. And another important thing we're going to implement is actually the GA4GH passport. Uh, this will allow users uh, to more easily access different data set using the one identity. Um, this is something that is uh, ongoing with different institutes, and I hope that Argo will have this in place as well. Uh, one thing we want to continue to support is the, the researchers who have different level of informatics expertise. Uh, as I show you, the ICDC 25K is really great with a lot of in-browser visualization and analysis. We hope to have those again in Argo. Uh, it just takes time to develop. Uh, but there's another level of uh, researchers who are already very familiar with uh, R or Python notebooks. Uh, so we want to uh, support that as well. So we want to make that integration more seamless and potentially, you know, work with even other analysis platforms such as Galaxy uh, to, to make the uh, integration easier. And lastly, there's more large scale analysis through workflows on compute clouds. And again, we want to make it easy to push the data, you know, to the cloud uh, and potentially pull the data back from the cloud as well. So as I said, the analytical workflows are established with the working groups. Uh, so I do believe they are pretty uh, well tested and benchmarked before we share with the community. Again, we want to make these reusable workflows that folks can use on their own research data. Uh, last part is workflow orchestration. Uh, this is something that I, because of my own experience in Peacock, I know how, how manually involved it could be. And I don't want that to be the case for Argo when we have to process 100,000 donors. So it got to be fully automated uh, with regular reports and alerts so that you, you don't have to constantly be watching it. Uh, and also we understand that, you know, if we use machine learning to, uh, to analyze some of the metrics we have collected, we should be able to better estimate the computer resources that are needed for a workflow on a specific sample. Or in some cases, you actually will predict that this workflow is not going to uh, finish on the sample because of data quality, then you won't even bother running it. So that's where I'd like us to get to. And lastly is to simplify the orchestration of workflows across multiple clouds. Uh, so this is sort of my, my dream. Uh, we're able to just have one workflow orchestration service, but that service really can be intelligent to talk to multiple clouds and assign the work accordingly based on number of conditions at real time. For example, well, which cloud actually has the data? Uh, well, which cloud has the capacity? Um, and which cloud may, may be running into uh, schedule maintenance, so I shouldn't be scheduling things like that. Um, so this would be really nice to uh, cut down the manual uh, 
labor to, to monitor the cloud orchestration. And again, we want to have all these dashboards to monitor uh, the progress. So everything I said uh, will take a couple of years to build. Like uh, that's why I said we have to build it block by block and we definitely don't do it alone. Uh, it's, it's really a community effort. So I definitely welcome anyone who wishes to collaborate, uh, to contribute. Uh, it would be really great to have a closer connection. And obviously we're not the only group doing uh, such an effort. Uh, I know Elixir is, is doing a really great job building a community cloud as well. So we definitely want to find the opportunities to collaborate and to interoperate. So lastly, this is my team uh, all on Zoom. Happily, uh, everyone is, is safe and, and working still very effectively. Uh, and lastly, this is uh, these are the funding agencies that support our project. So uh, with that, I thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Christina. This is impressive. And um, yes, maybe the, the, uh, I would say the, there are other groups that are doing some things or similar things, but uh, uh, you and, and OCR and your team uh, have been uh, breaking the ice uh, in cancer genomics. Yes, uh, of course, ICTC and uh, I mean, it started long ago. So yeah, that's, I think that's impressive. Please, some um, Salva, of course, please Salva. Uh, Cristina, wonderful presentation. I really love it. Um, we're working in Elixir and in many projects, so I'm quite familiar with all we, you were describing. I have a comment, a question. Um, yeah, <laughs> we'll start there. The, 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 the first uh, comment is, I really like the dream that I will add the legal component because sometimes it might happen that you say, well, uh, the computation has to happen in a given jurisdiction because GDPR and this kind of thing. So it's something that we, we, we shouldn't forget about it. Um, that is the comment. Uh, the, my question is, um, do you have pediatric cancer in the context of ICGCR? Yeah, so uh, with ICGC, we did have a couple pediatric uh, cancer types, uh, brain cancer specifically. In Argo so far, there's no pediatric commitment. Um, okay. We do interact with other projects. That's why I said data interoperability is so important. We, you don't expect all the data in one place. Uh, the one project that I was involved earlier is called the Gabriella Miller Kids First Project. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, run by NIH. Uh, is pediatric uh, diseases with some cancer types in there. So that's a very, very valuable resource. Uh, I hope that you know one day we could interoperate the data. So. Uh, when you do, say, a search through Beacon, and you will be able to find all the pediatric data across to well, I, I have to say that the equivalent to Eukankan, or one of the previous equivalent to Eukankan is called IPC, that is dedicated to pediatric cancer. And BSE is really involved there, working with people in CHOP in, in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. with yep. Get First and, and so on. So we, we are aware of that. It's, we're always looking for more, 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 more uh, data. My, my last comment, and I'm sorry for, for, for taking that long. Uh, in Elixir, we're working with the ben, uh, benchmarking platform for OpenEvench, and I have seen you have saying, well, workflows um, will be ideally benchmarked. So we will be happy to collaborate with you in that effort. So yeah, That would be great. Yeah, we, we, we welcome anyone to contribute uh, their, their analysis workflows. And basically, we want to get, we're still establishing the book work, uh, the benchmarking exercise because we need validation data, of course. Uh, our previous validation data from Peacock was aligned to GRC 37. Uh, so now with 38, we just need to do another validation set. Yes, and uh, I'd love to, to work together on that. More questions? I have some, but I'll wait. I, can, I don't know the chat if, if I, I don't know whether somebody's uh, saying something. Okay, I'll go ahead with mine. Um, 25K genomes. Um, it's an old data, uh, yes, uh, whatever, but um, there's still a lot of data there and a lot of whole genomes, uh, not ideally uh, all of them. The problem of clinical data, but have you, uh, I mean, I guess, 
first, integrating this 25K with pan cancer data is already a mess. Have you also considered with Argo? Uh, keeping, <laughs> are you considering to reanalyze this data? Does it make sense? Yes. So I think in, we're going to uh, prioritize Peacock to reanalyze to GRC 38. Mm -hmm. It's easier because the metadata was cleaned up right way back then. So much easier. Uh, 25K is really hard because of the metadata. So as you know, the data was submitted to EGA. And when we found the data, it's re it really takes us time just to match up the raw data with the sample IDs yeah. and, so on and so forth. And sometimes the, the data is not clear whether it's, you know, things like read groups could be missing. So how many lanes do you actually have in there to do the analysis? It was really hard. So it's really a matter of effort. Um, I would say if we can get the peacock reanalyzed, I think that's a big step. Uh, 25K will just be a lower priority depending on how much work we, how much analysis we have to do for Argo. And as, as this, uh, some of the groups you said that added the clinical data from the 25K project to the Argo, do yep. you think this is possible for the part of uh, Peacock data or would be also very complicated? I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know I it's a difficult question. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I mean, we, we definitely made a, made a call out uh, to people to... Uh, submit additional clinical data to supplement uh, the Peacock set. But most people said either their, their person doing the work has moved on or it will actually- Yeah, work. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yes, or I'm- um, Looking uh, through paper records again. My uh, connection was lost, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know, we yeah. know what's, what's, what's behind, but this is, this is sad because uh, for example, all the results that were obtained with the peacock data with the proper clinical data i mean it would have been another dimension yeah uh, that's that's i mean I we, the people that we work with data it would be another dimension so it's uh, well uh, we have to fight we have to keep fighting we have to keep fighting. <laughs> we, we may be able to uh, give some incentives for people yeah, yeah, yes, yes, um, uh, yes. But if uh, incentives are not enough, that you have to force them. Uh, well, but anyway, anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to get into this because uh, I get excited. Uh, more, more questions. Hi, Christina. This is Alfonso. Just uh, following on this uh, on this topic of uh, forcing people <laughs> to do things. So now Europe is preparing and. Um, a continuation of the one million genome project uh, with the with the money to sequence half a million of these samples. We see uh, how this takes uh, still is uh, in preparation. This will be a collection of uh, rare diseases and cancer. Mm -hmm. These are the two main uh, uh, topics right now. I mean, will be you know in the ideal world. Uh, the, 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 the annotations, the meta information uh, associated to the samples will be aligned with the recommendations of the 1 million genome that will be aligned with the global alliance that will be aligned with the ICGC. But uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm losing a little bit track of this because it's difficult to, uh, to really understand to what extent, or at least for me, to, to what extent the global alliance is taking the meta description of the cancer genomes as a recommendation and if it is this the case, if uh, uh, the European uh, Union will take this as well as a recommendation, that's in the line of, if the project will take this recommendation, then it will be obligatory for the people to deposit this data to get yeah. the, the grant or to justify the grant. So I think that this, uh, this is an important, at least from the European point of view, it's an important moment because this is where this thing has to be, has to be framed in a call for a proposal with the specific details of the quality of the data and the quality of the metadata. Absolutely, I think it's, it's really important to plan it correctly uh, right from the start. Um, GA for GH, you know, takes the lead to set standards, um, but they don't necessarily uh, recommend what amount of, what minimal clinical data we should be collecting uh, because also 
GA4GH is not disease specific. Uh, so they would recommend data formats for exchanging clinical data, such as the phenol packets, um, but they would not necessarily suggest, oh, uh, this should be the set of clinical data you, you should collect. I think this is still in the community. Um, there are groups that uh, geared towards the FHIR standard, uh, but some will say that, well, that may be too complex um, to, to handle, especially when groups do not have electronic uh, medical records uh, easily transformed. So it, it really differs between groups. Uh, in Argo, we see a, a number of different ways to collect the clinical data. Definitely some groups have their electronic health record system. So it could be easy for them to export things and exchange data, but some groups are still doing uh, manual curation. They would have study nurse to go through records of the patients to extract the fields that are needed um, and, and do the interpretation because obviously the data is not harmonized. Um, and so it really differs. I, I do hope that we get to a point where this is all electronic and, and it's much easier to do with natural language processing, et cetera. Yeah, obviously there is a lot of things to do in this in this area. Even uh, I mean, or at least our experience that even for the hospitals that they have that they have everything is in electronic health records and uh, databases, extracting the information is, is still a, a significant issue. So. Uh, there's, uh, there's still a lot of things to do to do in that. My 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 other question uh, along this line is uh, one of the issues, and there are many interesting conversations around your talk in different aspects. Of, but one of the things that does uh, is uh, uh, we are discussing now the organization of the German Genome Project, and that uh, has a number of very interesting. Uh, implications. One of them that uh, is now becoming a real complication is the reanalysis of the data. Uh, because now we, uh, you know, and that is affecting ICGC too, no? Now you did, the, no? uh, we did the pan cancer analysis, but sooner or later you would like to reanalyze the data because there are new methods to do all that. Yeah. In the clinical setup, you want to reanalyze because you may have this, to discover something else. In the research area, you may discover new things. So one way or the other, Reanalysis become a really a headache for all the systems because it has implications for the data storage, for the versioning of the software, for the version of the data, and then in the clinical setup for the uh, for what are you going to tell uh, the the patients out of the analysis. So I don't know if this uh, is this something that you have been thinking about. Yeah. So reanalysis in re re with the data over 10 years time is something I expect to happen. Like you said, new methods are gonna come. It's, it's significantly better than you have to go with it. Um, and that's why I try not to think about that day. <laughs> but <laughs> we, have to do um, we are kind of ready to, to purge data. Uh, is that, that's why I said, actually managing the data and tracking every bit of it with metadata is really important uh, because there's a gets to a point where you have the new version of the data now. Okay, we all agree, let's, let's delete the old data so we can make space. Um, so that's why we have a very good record of what's what. You sort of have a, um, a lineage of the data. Mm -hmm. So at some point, if we have to purge data, we can. Um, yeah, I, I think the reanalysis will happen. Just no, but this, I mean, it's true what you say, the traceability of the processes and the data becomes a really important issue. And, uh, you know, as we know, many of the project has not done that. So I think that's, yeah. uh, that's something to, to, to think about. I but have, uh, even going to 30, 30, GRCH 38 was got a lot of debate when we started Peacock. Uh, there was a debate whether should we stick with 37 or 38. Um, and it, there is definitely tendency for people to stick with what, what they know. I have a curiosity. I'm sorry you, you already said that because I missed the first five minutes or something. Uh, 
Uh, how many users uh, do you have? How many people uh, are connecting to the system and using the data from the, you know, from the, from the, from the web application? Uh, so for the ICBC 25K, um, I can't remember exactly, but I think we have around 2,500 users per month. Uh, it's definitely not as many, but they're across something like oh, 25 yes. countries or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's a good recipe. Thank you. Okay. If I, if I may, I think the reanalysis should have to be included in all the pipelines as a standard until, until I don't know, until the end of the world. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, revise, revisiting data is always to get more, but uh, yeah. So uh, more questions? No? If not, uh, well, uh, thank you again, Christina. And uh, we stole five minutes more from your time. Sorry. And uh, well, I'll keep seeing you for sure. And um, yeah, there might be more questions. We will channel them um, to you. Thank you very right. much for, for, thank you. for being here. Well, thank you for thank having you. me. Yeah, thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.